So here we are in the second part of the facility where they kind of finish the boats up. You see a couple of the new 33s over there in the corner. That one's being delivered to Destin. And then the 26 there, another 33, 26 full second station. This is kind of the clean part of the facility where they really finish everything. And we'll give them the grinding and layup in a little bit. But pretty efficient how they roll boats through here. deck and then this is the hole yeah is this his yep cool yeah that is a good look underneath there <clears throat> and you guys are infusing the stringer into the hole now right yep yeah well let's go over here real quick then visiting the factory now because uh, Tony here has purchased the 24 at one of our boat shows and it's currently in construction so they wanted to visit the factory to see what the process looked like. Most boat builders um, hand lay boats in this category. Um, a lot of them don't start until about the 30 foot mark infusing but we infuse all of our hulls and our stringers. So what they do is they gel coat the mold so when you walk you gotta think of boat building as when you walk up to a boat and you see the color, that's the first thing that goes on the mold is the gel coat, the color. They build the fiberglass from the outside inward. Mm -hmm. So they gel the mold, this is the mold, this is gel coat, and then they build up the layers of fiberglass inside that and core material. Then we set the stringers in it. Then we put the fiberglass over the stringers and make sure everything's placed right. Then they put this bag on here they seal the edges off, they hook a vacuum pump to it, it sucks the bag down, kind of like vacuum packing a, a something in your kitchen, you know, like the meat or yeah. something for the freezer, sucks it down, and then all these tubes go to the little ports in the bag, and they all go to that stick right there, and they put that down in a bucket of catalyzed resin, and then they open the valves, and then it sucks it just like a straw, sucks it in, you see it go into the fiberglass and start permeating it and it just grows out. This yep. one's done. You can you can touch it. This it's warm. Part, feel how warm it is right here. Oh wow. It's kicking right now. So, so that's the chemical reaction of the resin bonding to the fiberglass. Yep. The the catalyst, like like if you have a two-part epoxy uh -huh. at home and you squeeze it and you yep. mix it together, it's a similar principle. The catalyst generates heat and the thermal reaction hardens the resin. Now what's the advantages of doing the resin infusion? You get a tighter weave, you get a more near perfect resin to glass ratio. So when you do hand lay, and hand laying is a perfectly acceptable way to build a boat. And that's what they're doing over resin there. resin rich. Um, it's always resin rich. You get a near perfect glass to resin ratio if you vacuum. So you get more fiberglass material and less resin than you would in a conventional build. So, so you get a stronger, stronger boat, a little bit lighter than mm -hmm. if you have too much resin. Because if you get too much resin, it actually will weaken that part too if there's not enough fiberglass for that resin. So it's kind of cool. It's been yeah, a, this, this, is, it, this isn't the new technology, so to speak but it's kind of the best technology with regard to building fiberglass. So now our boat went through here already. Yep, yep. Yours was, yours was the previous boat to this. Oh, cool. Yeah, yours was probably the previous one. Um, yeah, this is kind of, let's go here. So our 33s are all ready, with the exception of a couple of small parts, but the smaller boats, hand lay the deck. So this is what hand laying looks like. That's, you smell how potent it is over here? As you get over here, it's really going to get strong. So now that boat will get flipped. Yeah, so that's a deck. Right. So they pull it, they flip it over, and then that's the part you walk on. So then this 
You know, flip that bone right in the inside. This? This. That's the bottom. No, the red, the, no, that's already being done. That's right. When they pull it off and flip it over, it'll be done. Okay. Um, the, the lamination portion of it. Yeah, they got to cut and all that stuff. But, but you see how labor intensive this process is here. Right. How many people it takes. There's six guys on that part. This is what a lot of people really don't understand about motor building is it's sort of um, archaic, if you will. It's, it's labor intensive. But why are you doing that about that? Because that takes a lot more for me to just solve it like this. This is called um, uh, Kusa board. So in the gunnel area like this, it's same in your boat and, and in our 26, the Kusa is in there. That way when we put like a, a rod holder through it or a, a deck cleat and we bolt it down, it doesn't compress and, and crunch everything. It has good backing behind it. And screw um, retention as well? Yep, and screw retention. This, this is called phenolic, check that thing out. So in the areas where your hard top bolts to your deck, uh -huh. a lot of boat builders they'll use a piece of aluminum and they get really excited and they really sell the fact that they use a piece of aluminum in their deck. The bad part is when you have aluminum in your deck and you put a stainless steel screw through it, you get dissimilar metal corrosion, you create a galvanic reaction and that's why a lot of feet and powder coat corrodes because they're putting a galvanic reaction in there. This stuff, you drill and tap it. It's a fiber reinforced composite board and when they drill this, they almost burn up their drill bits. You can literally smell it. That's how hard this stuff is. But this is what we laminate in. Very cool. So again, no, everything's <laughs> composite. We're not getting any wood anywhere. Um, and we're not using aluminum plate that would cause a galvanic reaction. One of the, a lot of people say, well, give me some reasons that your boat is, is more expensive than XYZ boat. And basically what I say is it's not one or two things, it's 150 little things. This is one of the 150 things. Not cheap, but it's the best way to do it, you know. It's a 33 deck, and you can see all the different materials they use for screw retention and compression built in, in case you ever put rod holders or accessories. Really well thought out product. Uh, all the drains installed throughout the boat. Uh, rest and fuse deck, you can see that too. Um, the console, the reinforcement on there. And you see there's a hard top being infused back there. A couple more hole molds, uh, center console mold. And everything in this facility is climate controlled. So they can really control the speed at which the resin uh, and catalyst uh, interacts with the fiberglass. So you don't get brittle areas like you do in some builders that are having to take constant temperature measurements uh, it's humidity measurements throughout the day. Uh, one of, I think, only four manufacturers in the country that are fully climate controlled, and they're climate controlled in both buildings, uh, with this one being the most important. Uh, this is where all the layup occurs. On the other side of that curtain, there's all the small part layup um, with all the molds. Some molds, uh, gel coat layup here for the 33. And we got more small part stuff. Consoles, deck lids, hatches. Really good looking stuff. They've got their processes down really well. Over the years, there's some grinding booth happening in there. Really compact facility, but they get a lot done. Some more finished consoles coming out. There's that climate controlling intakes for the AC units. Some more grinding going on over here. resin and catalyst really cool facility we'll go take a look at those finished boats again after uh, we get done walking through here way up happens in this building hand laid decks resin infused hull and stringer and then we have uh, two piece hard tops coming together over here 24 and 26 and then the small parts are happening on this other side of the curtain and then everything kind of gets walked through uh, down this gangway here to the next building for a final assembly a little bit cleaner facility over on that side and not having as much grinding and gel coating and 
resin being sprayed. All fiberglass. You can see the different knits and weaves, different angles on it used for different sections of the boat. And it's cut on a router for specific pieces. This is all the bulk material, and they, they cut it out right here on their, on their sheet bits router. It's just a, a, a seasonal. And you see the different knits on the fiberglasses too, Tony? They're using yep. different areas of the boat for strength, rigidity, angles. So it's not just you throw fiberglass in the thing and hope. It's an engineered product. So. And, and this... And there's orientation too, like you see the strands in this one are going this way. They may have two layers of this. And when they put the first layer in, the strands go that way. When they put the second layer in, the strands go that way. Um, it's just like uh, you ever work with plywood. Yep. Plywood digs really easy one way, but not another way. Right. Cool. So you want the grain to travel different directions. So yeah, old school builders will still use like a woven roving and just put it throughout the whole boat, and it's just not a and great engineer. it flexes engineer. more and bounces around, it's more noisy. You have a lot more solid piece here. Now from this point, Chad, about how long until the deck's on the, on the boat and all that stuff? I would imagine they'll deck this boat next week. Really, they get all the systems installed pretty quick. It's kind of cool getting to see the boat before yeah, it's a, it's big before a boat, cool. right? Picked a good time to come. And this one goes right on there, right? Yep. Consoles getting built. Yeah, that's the, those are the consoles for the, those other two. Now the console is a different size for the 24 versus the 26, right? Yes. A couple inches. Insulated boxes. Oh, you did your home fix the squall gray, the light gray color? Yeah. So come over here in that room, you got that top thing up there? Oh, no. oh really? I better look. Oh, cool. Insulated fish box. Yeah, that'll look sharp. That'll look really sharp. Yeah. That was the sample boat he had at the show. So in about a week we go from the hole and deck and then they cap it after all the systems are installed. You see they're just rigging that engine, installing the leaning post. We still got to put the console and hardtop on that are right next door. All the small, small parts get brought over and put on. See a lot of stuff gets test fit. That's where the old cushion was laying there. Just make sure everything works. And as it moves down the line, goes out the door and every boat is sea trial and water tested before it leaves the factory which is a big process and pretty big expense but uh, again doing things right is pretty important when you're in the boat building business helps us out as a dealer as well uh, we get a better product we know it's been tested and ready to go and actually there's one of our boats right there that they just sea trialed this morning that they're getting cleaned up now so I can drag it back with me and deliver it to a, another happy customer final product once it makes its way all the way through the building all the pieces and parts get installed comes out this side we pick it up drop it off to you ready to go so if any questions about this or the process feel free to give Brad or Barton a call 904-644-7631 or always at yamahamarinejax.com